Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Book and Game Festival Rishki, where authors connect their readers. Uh, today, we have a special surprise for you from Germany. Please meet Margit Auer, a book writer for children. Hello, Margit. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to meet you. Yes, it's an honor for me also to talk with you. Uh, unfortunately, we can't meet uh, uh, face to face, but I'm glad that we uh, can still meet like this virtually. And your book series uh, about the school of magical animals is a grand bestseller in Germany and has a huge group of fans. Uh, these books have been translated already in 24 languages and have sold over 3.5 million copies. So it's a huge success. And uh, we have uh, four books of the School of Magical Animals. There is the first part uh, in Lithuanian. <laughs> yeah, the same. Yeah, this is the German one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So actually, yes, the illustrations are the same as in Germany. So just the the title differs. It's in Lithuanian and then you are in yeah. German. Yeah. We, yes. So we have already translated four books in Lithuanian. And can you please share how many books have you already written about uh, the School of Magical Animals? So the children in Lithuania are very happy because a lot of stories are waiting for them. Um, I show you how many I wrote already in Germany. That's all. <laughs> so I hope you soon translate number five, the story about the quiz show. And this are a lot of adventures which are waiting for you. I wrote already 11 books about the magical animals. Um, you know, it's playing in a class, in a school class with 24 pupils. And there are lots of adventure which are waiting for you. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I can't wait because uh, this um, 2020 December, uh, we already published the fourth uh, book. Uh, Great, yes, yeah, I love the yes. story also very, very much. It's uh, school uh, traveling, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing stories. I really enjoy to read it. And yeah, we are waiting for the fifth uh, book also when it's going to be published. And I would like to ask you, could you share with uh, our listeners what are these stories about? Oh, maybe I show you the picture, the picture from the Wintersteinschule. Schule. Um, like um, as Nina Dolek um, draw it, it's a very, very normal school. It's a school maybe like in your country, a primary school, and you have the director, Mr. Siegmann, you have the caretaker, Willy Wontoschek, the children who visit the school, and you have the teacher, she's here, Mary Cornfield. But the special thing is there are animals at the school. You see maybe here the fox, you see the chipmunk, or you see here the little uh, penguin. And these uh, animals are very special animals because they can speak and they become the best friend of a child. For example, to Ida, she gets a speaking fox called Robert or Benny. He, his best friend is a little turtle and these animals help the children wherever they can. They are the best friends you can have. Yes, it's very nice uh, and uh, story. Uh, and I really like the idea that uh, children, uh, like those uh, school like Ida or other children, they can talk with their animals, just them, they can speak with them and they can understand uh, what they are saying. So none of other people can, uh, can hear them or understand them. And even the adults, can't, can't even see those animals. Um, and how did you come up with an idea of this uh, book story? 
Yes, I looked for a story which is um, a very normal story, which is an everyday story. And when my three sons visited the primary school, I, I mentioned how many adventures they have at school because children often do things the first day in their life. And every small thing for us maybe is for children a very, very big adventure. So for example, the first time when they May, when they are traveling without parents and the child feels homesick, it's really a big thing for her. And it's good that she gets an uh, animal who helps her. And um, I wanted to mix this very normal adventure with a little bit magic. And I know how much um, the children love their animals and they go to bed with their cat or they talk to their dog. And it was not such a big thing to find out that maybe the animal can talk again also. And that's a story, that's a magic and the special, special secret which love children so much that they have a special friend and it's their own friend. Their yes. only friend, yeah. Yes, and um, how much uh, long ago did you come up with this idea? Was it like... Uh five years or in your childhood and then you just wrote a book in in these days and when when it come up so in germany the first um book um came out 2013 and i had the idea three years ago so i'm still um with my magical world uh, i'm still around for 10 years or more <laughs> so I, we live together I live together with Mr. Morrison at Miss Cornfield. They are always in my mind. That's amazing. And do you have your own magical animal? At home, I have a little cat. Sorry, um, it's, uh, it's Lorenzo, but he can't talk. But um, in former times, we had other um, cats. And sometimes I really had the idea, yes, they could talk, not to me, but to my son. <laughs> he could speak to her, to the animal, yeah, to the cat. That's amazing. So your son's uh, magical animal is your cat. So that's also a great news. <laughs> and also, as I told, uh, this book series is very, very popular in Germany and also around Europe. And um, could you imagine that this book series is uh, going to be such a big success and how did you react when you understood <laughs> that it spread so much and it has so many fans? <laughs> yes, I'm still the same person. I'm still Margit, just Margit, but it makes me very, very happy. When I started with the first two books, I crossed my fingers and I hoped, please, 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 dear readers, read my books so that I can continue to write. Because I loved all my figures and this magical world so much, I didn't want to leave this world. And the readers really made me happy because they love the story very, very much. And that's what really made me happy. Because before they go to sleep, they read my stories or parents tell me um, her boy, uh, the boy or the girl they didn't want to read but they started to read with my books and I think they never will forget the stories as we never forget the stories of our childhood maybe the child now don't forget my stories when they are adults and that's make, this is the thing that makes me really really proud and I'm very happy. And I can continue. <laughs> yes, congratulations. I'm also very happy for your success and all the book series. And as I know, there should be a movie released uh, on October uh, that follows the story of the School of Magical Animals. And how did you react about this idea? First, I made a very high jump into the air. Uh, it's really a big honor um, when a film production company wants to produce um, a movie. But um, after a while, I was not sure. Um, maybe the film company don't find the pictures which I have in my head or which the readers maybe have in their head. And I was a little bit nervous. Would it be my world as I 
want to see it on the screen. Um, but I watched uh, the filmings and I saw already the movie, not the last version, but uh, parts of it. And I can be happy. It really is a very, very nice movie. We can looking forward to this. And when we are sitting in the cinema, I think we stop eating popcorn because it's really, really big fun. And yeah, and a good story. They, it's um, part number one, but not exactly uh, how we know it. So there are some surprises. In. <laughs> That's nice. And uh, do you have your own words in how the film was produced or how they choose the characters? Did they consult with you? Yes, um, the producers asked me a lot, but in the minted uh, points, I said, oh, it's, you can do it. Uh, you can choose the actors, you can look for the perfect school. Oh, they choose the castle. <laughs> Oh, really, a very, very big castle. That would be the Winterstein School at, at the movie. But I was very, very strict um, with the script. Um, I read it, all versions of the script. And I really wanted that the persons act like they do. Um, I don't want that they change the character. Miss Cornfield um, should be Miss Cornfield and they really made some mistakes and there I said no don't do that and really they changed it. Uh, can you share that mistake? What kind of mistake they did that with, with the teacher? Um, for example there was a little, a little bit much um, Harry Potter feeling so um, Miss Cornfield was um, she was a woman full of magic who can change things only by snipping with her fingers. And I said, no, that's not my story. Miss Cornfield only helps um, the children, but the children and the animals, they solve the problems, not the teacher who is snipping with the fingers and then everything is fine. Um, they had to change this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very nice. Uh, it's all. I also really like the in all those stories that children are responsible for their problems, for the activities they're doing, and that they're making decisions by themselves, helping mm -hmm. with their animals. So that's really really nice. And does the movie differ a lot from the book, like from the first story? And how does it differ? Because you said there are some surprises. <laughs> Oh, 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 you want to know a lot from me. Um, yes, it starts really with a big surprise um, because maybe you know the first book, um, uh, the first pages in the book, Mr. Morrison travels um, um, to the Antarctis and to find Yuri the penguin. But that's not what we see in the movie. We see okay. a different story, but this story also is very, very, very yeah, special. <laughs> so that's, uh, but nevertheless, it's more or less the story of um, book number one. So um, Ida gets Robert and Benny gets the turkey. And Joe is the one who isn't the most friendliest guy at the moment. At the end, he is. <laughs> Everybody loves him at the end, even Ida. And um, yeah, it's a tricky story. Okay, so there are going to be surprises. So it's also interesting for them who already read the book story. Mm, of course, and how yeah. Be released. So yeah. yeah, very amazing. Uh, and also, um, uh, I know that the books are illustrated by Nina Dulek, and mm -hmm. the illustrations are great, so uh, live and, and colorful. And yeah. how did you met with this uh, illustrator? I didn't choose her. That was the publisher, Carlsen in Hamburg. They made the decision because they know uh, the style of Nina Dolek, how she's working, and she has a very good feeling for um, characters and animals. And I'm very happy uh, about this decision. Um, I think she makes very beautiful drawings and very heartwarming pictures. And um, later we met and I said, oh, great uh, work you do, Nina. And she said, great work you do, Margit. So we appreciate the work of the each other. 
Um, but maybe I can tell you one funny story. Um, Nina started with volume number one and she printed this. Uh, no, she, she painted, uh, draw this animals. And you know, we have the turtle, we have the fox, we have the magpie, but there was no owl in my stories. So Nina just choose the owl and put it on the page. And um, I looked at it and was surprised. What is the owl doing in my stories? And I said, okay, she looks nice. Maybe she is a member of the pet store. Maybe she gets a little, little part of the thing. But I saw her so long and I loved her more and more. And she gets a big part in book number five. <laughs> then the owl comes into the story, the old Nina Tolek draw. <laughs> yes, actually, I'm waiting for the um, fifth book, and I'm, I'm really uh, want to know what the owl is going to do in there, and is yeah. the owl also the magical animal or not, so I really uh, wait for the story. And as I understood, to work with uh, Nina Dulek for you was easy. And did you, uh, well, also inspired by her? And how was your work with her going on? Like, was it easy or did you have some problems working? And No, it was really easy. Um, first, I write the story. I send it to my publisher. We... Yes, we work with the story, we make it better. And uh, while I am still make it better, the manuscript comes to Nina Dulek and the publisher tells her what they want to illustrate, which pages they want to see, which ideas she has. And um, I think they make a very, very good job. I don't say you have to do it like this or like this because she's also a very... Yes, a creative artist, and she. I want. I don't want to stop her ideas. Um, the ideas are wonderful. Um, just go on, Nina. And did you imagine all those characters? For example, Ida, as she illustrated, or a, a little bit different? It is in your mind. Yeah, at first it's really. Yes, at first I really had some problems because um, I started the story. To, yes, around 2010, um, and I had Mr. Morrison and Miss Cornfield in my head for two years, and then I found my publisher, and then the illustration illustrations came, and Mr. Morrison wasn't as I imagined. Um, I had a different figure in my head, but nevertheless, I said, oh, he really looks good. Uh, Nina, um, that's your Mr. Morrison. So... I changed my, yeah, my thinking about him. And now for me, her, Mr. Morrison, is my Mr. Morrison. Now he looks like he, he um, draw him. That's really nice that you come up with, with the same ideas and you really like the illustration. And how did you choose a magical animal for, for a book character? Um the character of the animal has to correspond with the character of the child. So for example, um, Ida is a very clever girl. She has red hair and so has Robert the Fox. He also is clever and the red hair. And um, Benny is very cozy, very slow um, and he um, gets the turtle and the turtle also is not the fastest one uh, but she's a very good friend she's very wise and he can give uh, she can give um, Benny some advices and so I'm looking that there is a big correspondence between child and the animal and it's great fun to to find the the right animal mm -hmm. and did you have any difficulties by are creating one of the character or the magical animal? No, that's really easy. I have really a lot of ideas in my mind. Um, 
when I start a new book, I start to sort my thoughts and everything must fit together. What happens at school? What problems has the child? Who will help him or her? What surprises will happen? And the challenge is everybody loves and knows the figures, but everybody wants to read a new funny adventure and things must happen, which no one expects. That's um, the challenge, but um, no, no problems. That's great because your creativity solves everything and you can choose uh, a, a magical animal to a character and all those uh, kind of features for, for them. And uh, what, which was the first magical animal that you uh, choose for a character, not in the book, but uh, in your mind, that you come up and you thought, okay, this magical mm -hmm. animal is for this character. Yes, um, that's really funny because I started with Eugenia the Little Bat. That was the first story I wrote. Um, I wrote the story with Eddie and the little bat. And the bat helped um, Eddie at school because he was the, the clown. Uh, he couldn't hear what the teacher is saying to him. And she helped him. And that was the first story. And this story um, reached the publisher. And they said, oh, what a nice little animal. And what a nice story about the friendship. So I'm very happy that um, Eugenia came into my mind. She, yes, she opened my new way of living. Um, she, I started to be a writer with her. <laughs> That's amazing. And did you uh, already knew that it's going to be a book series? Or in the beginning, you thought that it's going to be just only one book and just yeah. later it come yeah. more? Yes, uh, nobody knew me. I just uh, started with some little books, but they were not so popular as this one. And um, I had just one story and I wanted to write one book. <laughs> and But then the publisher said, oh, there's so much um, yeah, more in the story. Let's start a series. Let's start at when the school year begins and a new child comes into the class and so um, it was not the plan for me but I'm very happy that the publisher had the idea so I can write and write and write and write and write. <laughs> and when do you start to write a book? Uh, do you have already a plan or some kind of order how it's going to finish uh, or it's all those ideas come up spontaneously by writing it? Yes, I know the end of the series, but I don't know the details. Because before I, so at the moment, um, I know um, what will happen in volume number 12, because this one I'm writing right now, but I have no idea what will happen in book number 13. Um, so when I started uh, book number 12, I choose a character. Which child would be the most important person in my book? And what will happen to her or to him? Which animals correspondence? correspondence? What is the story uh, with the class? Um, what is the school story? And so I think I, yes, it takes one month just to think about it. And then I have it in my mind and I have a plan what happens in first chapter, second, third chapter. And this plan is next to my um, computer and then I start writing. And then it took maybe about three months. Um, then the first, yes, the first version is, is good enough so that I can send it to the publisher. Yeah, that's nice. So three months for one book. So it can come like four books in, in one year or, <laughs> or, or you do, do you make pauses between books? Yes, I think I need also pauses and I need time just to think about what happens in my life <laughs> and what happens next. And a lot of work comes to me. I should uh, make a speech somewhere or I give interviews or visit someone or I make readings. And uh, maybe I can show you, oh yeah, I write in Germany also little, little crime stories about um, Murphy 
coffee, the polar beer. That's a really very, very nice and beautiful illustrations from Nina Dolek. And it's very, very little and funny stories about a detective Murphy. So yeah, it's more or less three or four books a year, um, maybe too much, but I know the, the child's wait for the next book. And so I like to write. So your uh, your biggest inspiration to write and to write it even like faster are children. It's it's very nice. And uh, I also want to ask uh, because this book series, the School of Magical Animals, are not just about the friendship, uh, but it shows a lot of um, uh, other things, like uh, encourages to be brave, to be responsible responsible for your actions or for someone like your friend and shows that everyone is unique. So this story reminds me a little bit uh, of a book, uh, The Little Prince. And did this book have uh, influence uh, on you to write a story? Because there are some kind of similarities, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, often journalists ask, ask things like this. Your books remember me to Philip Pullman's this dark materials. Oh, they remember me to this or to that, but sorry, no. <laughs> I didn't uh, read his dark materials before and The Little Prince isn't a book which inspires me, sorry. <laughs> um, but of course, I, there are a lot of books in my mind, books I know very good and maybe they inspire me. So maybe Mr. Morrison is a little bit like Hagrid in the Harry Potter world. Maybe he's a little bit like Patterson from Patterson and Findus. I think you know it also. Maybe a little bit like um, Meister Eda and his cohort Pumuki. It's a very famous Bavarian children's series, um, which I loved when I was a child. So maybe he's really a mixture of a lot of figures. Um, I read about it, I heard about it, I saw the movies, but nothing to do with the little prince. <laughs> yeah, I think that everyone that they read uh, or they have their own childhood books, they ha could have some similarities because of their own personality. So, so, so yes, as you told, um, it's nice to know what really inspired you uh, what kind of characters uh, came up to your mind? And um, I found some photos and videos uh, that you did a lot of interactive activities with, with kids uh, at school. You did trips and excursions with them, and you even uh, went with Omnibus. And please <laughs> tell me more about these trips because I'm really interested in that. I'm very sorry to say it's not my omnibus. I would like to have one, that's true. But uh, the street where I live is too small. I think the neighbors would be angry if I park a bus in front of my house. So um, the publisher rented this old omnibus um, for some special events. That was really great fun. We sing together the magical animal song and we made some quiz. And I like the interaction with my friends, with my fans, with my little readers. They know a lot. <laughs> you can ask them everything. They can answer nearly every question. And I have a lot of readings um, in normal times. And at all my readings, um, Yes, we make sport together. I call it Henrietta's gym class. So we walk and we run. <laughs> and on every reading, I ask um, the children, which animal would you like to have? And I listen very carefully to the answers. Oh, so, so maybe some of the children's dreams came true and you brought a those. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. <laughs> For example, I think you don't have already volume number seven, number seven, um, but in number seven, um, Ronja gets a little dog. 
<laughs> a dog is really a very normal animal. I wouldn't choose a dog because, oh no, it's, it's, it's so normal. Everybody has a Kytec dog. Um, but the children, they wish so hard that there is a dog in the story like they have at home. And it jumped into book number seven. Yeah, so they have to wait for it, but they yeah. <laughs> wait and then they got the dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some years. That's really nice. And Margaret, I would like also to ask about your own hobbies, your own inspiration. So what kind of hobbies do you have? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I live in Bavaria and I like to do things outside. Um in this rainy winters, I make jogging nearly every day. Um, not even rain or snow can stop me. In summer, I like hiking in the Alps. I like swimming in the lakes, like with cornfield. <laughs> and I like camping with my family and with my friends. I like to invite friends and I hope the times will come. These wonderful things are possible again. That's nice. So you're really a nature person, yes? Did you get inspired by nature? Do you get some new ideas or some new characters maybe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah. That's nice. And also, do you always want you to be a writer? Oh, never. I read a lot of books when I was a child. I never had the idea that I can write these books. I wanted to become a postwoman when I was a child. We had a very nice postman um, in our area. And I had the idea, oh, that would be fun. I cycle with my bike and I give the letters to the people, a little chat every day. But um, it came different. Um, I visited the university. I started to work as a journalist. Uh, I love this work also very, very much to find stories, uh, to meet interesting people. Um, but then uh, the child uh, came into my life, three little sons, and it was hard to work as a journalist. Uh, so I started to write um, children's stories. And what was your first book that you wrote? Uh, I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's um, the first book. It's a crime story uh, in the old Rome. So the Romans lived in the area where I live 2000 years ago. And I wrote a story about, yes, Magnus and Finn, two boys. And how many books have you uh, written already till now? Oh, I think it's about 30, maybe. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I also want to ask uh, some questions from our readers. Uh, and one of, uh, of the question is, do you have anything in common with the teacher, Miss Cornfield, from the book? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, as Miss Cornfield, I believe in the power of um, children. I believe they can reach a lot. They can change a lot. I think sometimes they are clev more clever as adults. And I would help children as Miss Cornfield does in all times, in all situations. That's really nice. Uh, okay, so the next question of our readers is, where do you get inspired or what inspires you? Oh, I get my inspire from, yes, from the life. Um, I walk around and I try to watch the world with the eyes of a child. Um, for childs, so many things are new and about what are they laughing? What is funny? What is a challenge? And I watch this and maybe I make a story about these little things. For example, a girl hates water. He don't want to swim, um, but it's nice to swim. And so maybe she gets an animal who helps her. And while you are writing, uh, do you read any other books? 
Oh, most of the time I read really a lot of books. At the moment, I read a lot of books about Egypt because maybe one child of Miss Confi's class is traveling to Egypt or he visits a museum and um, I'm looking for a wild adventure. That's my next challenge for the next books because in Germany, I also write holiday adventures about um, the child's. Um, but I also like funny things. Um, at the moment, for example, I read like um, Herr Siegmann, Mr. Siegmann, the director. I, I write, uh, I'm reading Asterix and Obelix, <laughs> the comic. I think you know it also. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and well, what of those books are your the most favorite books? Oh, the most favorites, of course, I love Astrid Lindgren. She is really a very, very great writer, Pippi Langstrom. It's um, 50 years old, no, it's 70 years old, and it's still so, um, so real. And I love her stories. I love her easy sentences, which tell us so much. So I'm inspired by Astrid Lindgren and also by Joanna K. Rowling and Harry Potter adventures because they, it's just such a big fantasy and such a fantastic world. Um, yeah, really, really great. I, should, I think she should be the next Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice of you to, to say that and to wish. <laughs> yeah. And the last question from our readers is, Do you have your favorite book story of the book series, The School of Magical Animals? Yes, I told you already the story about Eugenia, the little um, bat. Um, I think I love this book most because, um, yes, this book really changed my life. Um, yeah, yeah. Book number three is my favorite. <laughs> That's nice. And thank you so much, Margaret, for this conversation. And for the end, I would also like to ask you, what would you like to wish to our Lithuanian readers? Oh, uh, my dear readers, I wish you a lot of funny books. Uh, I wish you a very interesting life. And I wish that you find your way, like um, the children in Miss Cornfield's class. Every one of us is different and it's okay. You don't have to be brave in every situation. You can, yes, you can be the one you want to be. That's my wish. Find your way. Do it. Thank you so much, Margaret. And for all our listeners, uh, you can check even more uh, interviews, conversations with authors and illustrators on our YouTube channel, Debesutele. And don't forget to check for the book series, The School of Magical Animals. Thank you so much, Margaret, for the conversation, for your time. And I wish that next time maybe we can see each other in reality, face to face. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, thank you so much. Have fun at your festival. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>